hi there and welcome back to another stcp video in this video let's see how you can set up remote backup using the built-in hestia backup system so what you want to do is you want to log in to your panel via admin if you're not admin then you won't be able to set up the backups you have to set it up as the admin user on your panel so to do that you will go into your settings and then You'll come here under configure and you can find backups so you do have local backup and then the directory by default your server will take them to backup if you haven't changed this setting that is the default you can also set up remote backups so let's click there on remote backups and you can use ftp sftp you can use our clone but for this video, we want to use Backblaze. Backblaze provides affordable backup servers that you can use in this situation. Let's go to Backblaze. And what you may want is, is it cloud storage? Let's see if that's the one. And then you can get started with 10 GB free. So if you don't have an account, let's just create an account. Put in your email there. And then sign up i will just say take me to my account log into your account so of course increase the font the first thing you want to do you want to create a bucket because if you come back here you'll see that you need a bucket and the key id for your bucket and the application key and let's just create a bucket this is where the backups for your server will be saved the backup name we can give it the name of our server and then files in buckets are private or public i'll leave it as private default encryption you can enable if you forget the key you lose access to that so you might disable that if it's not really that sensitive and then you can put object lock but since this is a backup i'm just going to leave object lock on uh, you can enable it but i'm going to disable that and then I'm going to create the bucket. Oh, Saba misspelled, but that's okay. You can edit the bucket settings. Apparently, you cannot change the name. If you want to connect it to the HTTP, what details do we need? We need the bucket. The bucket. The bucket name. And then your API keys. So let's open this in a new tab, application keys. So here, let's just generate a new key. Generate a master key. And when you generate the key, you're going to get the key ID. You also have to copy that and save it somewhere because you won't get that key shown to you again. So just paste it there. That, that, everything, and if it accesses the server, then you're going to see no problem. Let's just add here zero and you'll see that it's going to fail the authentication. So you can see failed to connect. All right. Let's come back and uh, remove that zero. If everything else is right, it should connect. And you see changes have been saved. This means that HTCP is going to automatically back up all your users into Backblaze. The next time you want to find your backups, you can come to your bucket or you can browse files. So right now, there is nothing in my bucket. But tomorrow, if I come back, I should find something here let's just go and see if i try to this is a small server if i go to my backups i create a backup let's see if it's going to upload it there so just give it time and then we're going to come back here into our bucket refresh to see if we have any files inside here so also note that when you're setting up the key the new key here under application keys you can actually set it up so that the key can only be used for that bucket 
So if you come to application keys, down here you have add a new application key. You'll give the key a name and then allow access to a specific bucket. So that's something that is also helpful for security. For me, this is just a sample. I'm going to delete everything. As soon as I'm done with this tutorial, I'm going to delete all these details, all the keys and the bucket. As we wait for the backup, I also want to, I want to show you where you can add the number of backups. Sometimes it's important to have more than one backup. To change that, you need to change it under your packages. So if you come into users and you go into packages, if you may be setting this up for your users, you can create another package or if they're using the default package, just edit the default. And then in the default package, down here you have number of backups. And if you put 10 backups, that means that there will be 10 backups. So they will delete the last one, but the rest will remain. So you'll always have 10 backups. If you have a, a huge server space, you can even make them 30. That way you always have a backup for each day. But that is your preference and it also depends on your server space and how much you're willing to pay for the backup space. So if I put there three, I can save that. And if I come back here, oh, that is for, this is for the other user. If the other user, we go to the other user, that is using the default package you'll see that now they have instead of one out of one they have three backups so we can see that the backup let's log out of that into the admin we can see that the but the backup for admin has been done there's one out of one backup you can also increase the number of backups for the admin but you probably don't have anything in admin So let's come into the bucket and see if it has been uploaded or it's taking time or how long will we wait for it to be uploaded. But just know that if you come into your buckets, you'll find your users, all the users in your server, their backups will be here. If you need to backup remotely, this is how you can do it. So just to recap, the first thing you have to do, you have to come here under server settings, go into configure and then under configure, come here into backups so if you don't want the local backup you can also set up this one to no. so your server won't be filled with that but of course i'm going to leave it at yes and you just need to set up remote backup and then get the keys from there and you're going to have your backups here so i can delete this bucket by just coming here under bucket settings and then you're going to scroll down you're going to scroll down and then you're going to click on delete bucket before deleting bucket you must first delete all the files in the bucket all right what do we have in this bucket upload or delete you can see that our backup has arrived you can see that it's actually working so if you go into admin that's for admin but the other one will also come so just give it time you'll find that the other one will also be uploaded admin and the other user both of them will be uploaded can select and delete it's refused to delete probably because the other one is still coming in and there are some temporary files but once everything is brought here you can just delete them and delete the bucket and i'm going to do that off of the video i'm going to do that offline once the video is done all right that's pretty much covers it if you have any question just feel free to let me know i will see how to assist you